Hi guys, let's continue our amazing run through of multiple choice questions. This time we're going to look at very tough theory based multiple choice questions, but nothing is tough when you know your stuff, especially if you're following my process, my tips, my guidance, you'll smash it. Let's start with something that always causes a bit of confusion, the shutdown condition. Okay guys, so again, we have a load of waffle at the start that's telling us what's on the diagram, but we have eyes. It's clear to see that we're in perfect competition with horizontal ARMR, but it's also clear to see that this firm is making a loss. How do we know this firm is making a loss? Because at the quantity of Q, average revenue is less than average total cost, right? So we can see average revenue is there, but average total cost is up there. So we can see that a loss is being made. However, this is clearly linking to the shutdown. That's why ABC is on this diagram. And we know that a firm should shut down. So definitely a firm should shut down if average revenue is less than average variable cost. Is that happening here? Well, no, because again, average revenue is there at quantity Q, but average variable cost is down below there. So that is not the case. We can say over here, average revenue is greater than average variable cost. So continuing in the short run is in the best interest of this firm. Now, all of this I would be writing down if this was an exam question when wherever there is some white space. So now knowing all of that, let's go to the answers and simply try and eliminate two wrong answers if we're finding this a bit difficult. So let's see what A says. A says um, that this firm is making a loss in the short run, yes, but will remain in the market in the long run. Hmm. Now that's a bit tricky. There's part of that that's correct. Not sure about the last part. So maybe leave that one. Is making a profit and will remain in the market in the long run? No, we know they're making a loss. So that's clearly wrong. Will exit the market immediately to minimize its loss? No, because they are covering their average variable cost. So therefore staying in the market in the short run is the rational strategy. So not exiting immediately. So that is wrong. So we've eliminated two clear wrong answers. What we're left with is a correct answer, which is either A or D and a distractor. Let's see D. D is saying is minimizing its loss by staying in the market in the short run. Well, that seems correct to me. Let's go back to A. Is making a loss in the short run? Yes, but will remain in the market in the long run. Well, we know from our theory that staying in the market in the long run depends on whether the overall loss will continue over time. If this loss continues over time, they can't continue making losses. They'll eventually shut down. We know this firm is hoping that other firms who don't meet the shutdown condition will leave the market, the price then will be driven up, and then hopefully this firm will at least make normal profit. But there's no way we know that information just from this diagram. So what happens in the long run, we're not sure about. So therefore, staying in the market in the long run, we don't know, and therefore A is gonna be incorrect. D is the one that makes 100% sense. That is 100% correct given the information that we have, given the diagram that we have. So great way, guys, of using that technique of eliminating two wrong answers, leaving yourself with the correct answer and, and the distractor, and then you can use your economic skill, get rid of the distractor, and just get the correct answer. Really useful technique, but based on very good knowledge of theory. So yeah, not a problem at all, guys. Not a problem at all. That's some great advice, especially looking at eliminating two answers. Always a good way to go if you're finding things tough. Now we go into a topic area where examiners love to ask lots of questions. The maximization condition in economics. Oh yeah, do we know where things are maxed? So again, we have a load of waffle. Are we seeing a clear theme, guys? That for diagrams, tables, charts, they just tell you what's being shown, but we have the eyes. And that is a very useful way of just you know, reducing time on multiple choice questions by a good five, 10 seconds. So let's go to the question down here. At what level of employment will total output of the firm be at its maximum? Okay, maximization points. Well, we know in economics clearly, importantly, that maximization, maximization of anything occurs when the marginal, occurs when the marginal is zero and that happens everywhere in economics. Think about total revenue. Total revenue is maximized when marginal revenue is zero. Total utility is maximized when marginal utility is zero. Profit is maximized when the marginal profit is zero and there is no more profit to be gained. That's where MC equals MR. So whenever the marginal of that thing is zero, we have maximized whatever that thing is, right? So in this case, we are looking to maximize total output. Well, total output is maximized when marginal output is zero, when there is no more marginal output to be gained. Well, immediately that is occurring here, right? When marginal returns is zero, when marginal output is zero. But just to make that clear, let's look at this. 
Whenever employment occurs and marginal returns or marginal product is positive, then employing one more worker, so let's say from W to X, employing that worker W to X, as long as marginal returns is positive, and it is positive here, then that's going to increase total output. Even if we went from X to let's say this point over here, right? let's just call it one, from X to one, we can see that at one, marginal product is still positive and therefore that worker is still going to be adding to total output. However, if we went from Y to let's say over here, let's call that two, then clearly marginal product is gonna be at some negative figure that's going to be dropping total output. So it's clear that total output is only maximized when there is no more marginal output to be derived and that occurs when marginal output, marginal product, marginal returns is zero and that is a OY, simple stuff. Remember, maximization occurs when the marginal is zero. Good advice there, keeping it simple. Let's stick with this theme of maximization though and just make sure you're 100% okay. Again, we don't need this random stuff at the top because we have I as our common theme again. The question is way down here. At which one of the following levels of output will the firm maximize its profit? All right, so now we're looking at profit maximization and we know that occurs when marginal cost equals marginal revenue. The problem here though, we don't have MC and MR information and we don't have TC and TR information to then work out MC and MR. So we can't really use that condition on this question. We have to just work out the level of profits, but it's very easy to do with average total cost info and average revenue information. As long as you remember that average in economics always means the unit something. So average total cost is the cost per unit, average revenue, the revenue per unit. And therefore what we have here are the unit profits being made. So if we work out the unit profits as the difference between average revenue and average cost, multiply that by the total units of output and we have the total profit. So over here, uh, for 10 units of output, we've got 15 total cost, average total cost, 26 pounds of average revenue. That's 11 pounds of profit per unit times by 10. That's gonna give us 110 pounds of total profit. Here, the unit profit is 10. That's the difference between AR and ATC multiplied by 11. Again, that's 110 total profit. Uh, for 12 units of output, again, we have 10 pounds of unit profit multiplied by 12, it's 120 total profit. And now we have 12 and 21, that's nine pounds of unit profit times by 13, that gives you 117. So it's clear to see that profits are being maximized with 120 pounds of total profit at 12 units of output, easy. As long as you remember that average is just the unit of something in economics. Simple, let's move on. Okay, we get the idea of maximization. We're happy, we're ticking, we're loving it, we're loving life generally. Great, but what about this next topic area? An examiner's favorite always comes up in multiple choice. Examiners love this topic area. And that is because there's lots of process, there's good knowledge of conditions needed, and often there are calculations to do, and that is returns to scale. How do you feel about returns to scale? Let's see. So again, we don't need all this garbage at the top. We can go straight to the question down here. So the firm experiences constant returns to scale when it increases its output from what level? So constant returns to scale. Well, I've put all the key conditions on the side here. For constant returns to scale, percentage change in output equals percentage change in input. That's the key one. We've also got increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale. Important that we remember that. Uh, if it was me in the exam, I would certainly be writing the top condition down to remind myself where constant returns to scale occurs. Now, what we have are the units of output, so that's great. And we also have all the units of input, so that's capital, land, and labor. So we need to add those all up to get the total inputs for each unit of output, right? So we'll do that in a second. But what I've also put down here is the percentage change equation, because clearly we can see from these conditions we need to work out percentage changes in output, percentage changes in input. So first, let me add up all the level of inputs and clear that up so that we're not looking at too many numbers. So the total amount of inputs for the first bit is 120, and then we're going to 480, and then it's going to 840. And then if we add up those three, we're going to 1260, and then we add up the last three, it gives us 1740. So that simplifies our mind a little bit. It saves us looking at lots of different numbers in three different columns. We can now just look at these. Now we need to look at percentage changes. We need to look at percentage changes in output versus the percentage changes in input. And that's where this equation is great. Now for output, if you're you know, very quick with your maths, you can hopefully just see what the percentage changes in output are. If you can't, then use the equation, but looking very clearly, that's 100%. That's also 100%. That is very clearly 50%. And that's very clearly 33.3%. Now, if you're like me and you can see that very fast, then great. If you can't use the equations and you'll get it 
very quickly as well. And now we just need to look at the percentage changes in inputs and we can see that this first one, I don't need to work out exactly what it is and I can see that that is going to be greater than 100%. So that's not gonna be constant returns. This next one, may, work, may as well use the equation on this one and if we did, we would get the number of 75%. So we can see 75% increase in inputs versus 100% increase in outputs. That's increasing returns, that's not constant returns. If we do the same thing for this next change in inputs from 840 to 1260, you'll see that's a 420 change. So that's the difference. Divide by 840 times by 100 will give you a 50% change in inputs there. And that's the exact change in output as well. So boom, we have the answer. Constant returns when percentage change in output is equal to percentage change in input where we have 50% and 50%. And that is from 2,000 to 3,000 units. Absolutely killing it. How good is that, guys? That will make you feel like a pro. It will make you feel like an absolute economics don. But you see how these conditions are fundamentally important. That percentage change equation also very important. Oh my God, too simple, too simple. Oh, so no problem at all, guys, no problem. A lot of process, but once you know your conditions, once you know how to do some key calculations, what a breeze, and in fact, that's true of everything. If you know your content, what a breeze all of this stuff is. Hopefully you've followed along, you've listened to the key advice, the key tips, the key guidance. No problem at all if you can do multiple choice questions like that. So well done for going through all of that. Uh, let's stay tuned, another video coming to really make sure you can push hard. I'll see you in that next video, guys. Mm -hmm.